Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today Show with Ralph Friedrichs. Today we are going to talk about how you can help a, uh, a loved one um, or a friend or just anyone that has alcohol or drug addiction issues, how you are best served to help them. Um, as always, I want to give a shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez from startingpointmn.com. He has a couple entities to his business. Uh, the first and foremost is how he can help you with your addiction, how he can help your loved one with your addiction, with their addiction. He will walk with you step by step, hand by hand, 24 hours at a time, never ever talking about your past. He only worries about today and worries about tomorrow. It is not a good thing to talk about uh, the past to someone who is already fragile, who might get a stressor or a relapse due to you bringing up their past. Let's concentrate on today. Let's worry about tomorrow. And that is exactly what Dr. Luis Gonzalez will help your loved one, your friend, even yourself. You can reach him at 844-414-8444. On the other side of his business, if you have passion, professionalism, or personality, and you have an addiction background, whether it's battling your own or maybe helping someone else, call him at 844-414-8444. 44 and look, go through his educational program where he can help you become an addiction recovery coach. I always tell people that are first becoming sober that besides all the information you need to absorb and all the things you need to do to stay sober, come up with a passion. My passion is sitting here in front of this camera and helping you through the lens, helping you in your kitchen, your living room, homeless shelters, jails, watching my videos, me educating my audience, me letting you know about my personal history and letting you know about people that talk to me that are real people with real stories. I bring that to you. Find that passion and if your passion is becoming an addiction recovery coach, call Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444. Go to his website at www.startingpointmn.com and when you do talk to Dr. Luis Gonzalez, tell him Ralph Friedrich sent you. Now another commercial. I love to talk about this company and it's GlobalEyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving you money and focus on saving you money is exactly what they do with prices of frames that are as low as $6 and go up to about $49. Here's the big one. Those prices include standard plastic non-coated clear standard RX lenses, a cloth and a case all for as low as $6 up to $49. Now if you want to add things like progressives, we can do them. You want to add things like line bifocals, they can do them. They can change the color into a sunglass. They can give you photochromatics. They can give you transitions. They can give you polarized. They can make the lens from thick to thinner. All that is available at extra cost on top of the cost of the frame at GlobalEyeglasses.com. They are focused on saving you money. And folks, I am here to tell you that I know this company very well and I'm also uh, in the optometry field for over 30 years, so if you need help placing those orders, contact me, text me at 631-599-0218, or you can call me at 844-405-HELP, and I will help you place your order with www.globaleyeglasses.com, and let them focus on saving you money on your glasses. Go to my website, www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow, or www.clearviews.info. Take Your Life Back Today show website is uh, videotapes, my story, uh, my uh, bio is on there. All that's available on that website. And you can read the thousands of comments that I get from people from all over the world. Uh, www.clearviews.info is exactly what the last word means. It's information on addiction and recovery. And you will find it at www.clearviews.info. Like I promised today, we are going to talk about how you can help an alcohol uh, or drug addict. And the first uh, thing that we want to talk about is we have to proceed with caution when we help people. We cannot judge them. We cannot tell them not to or to do something. What you need to do is have an open mind and put yourself into their situation. A friend or a loved one is caught up in the cycle of addiction has to be approached in the right way. We all know Worthless advice is on is on deaf ear, uh, deaf's ears. So you don't want to give advice that's worthless. You don't want to say, "Why do you drink? 
You don't want to say, why do you do drugs? Don't you know it's not good for you? Those are statements that are counterproductive and will not help the person. And you don't want your advice to fall on deaf ears. And this is bound to be the case with certain approaches in trying to help struggling addicts. Try to use some of the tips uh, that you might read about on my clearviews.info page, but here are a few tips that I would like to, uh, uh, to give you. What you have to define is, is there a complete denial of the addict? If a person is in complete denial of their addiction, then there is, a, uh, there is little that you can do. Uh, other than focusing on your own behavior. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on how you speak to them, how you judge them. Or you shouldn't judge them, but if you are, how and why are you judging them? You need to set boundaries between the addicted and yourself uh, with, uh, with um, caution. You need to let them know, listen, this is acceptable and this is not acceptable. Let them know you won't bail them out in the future if they call you, in other words, Let's say your addictive friend gets pulled over and goes, uh, gets arrested for DWI. Let them know you are not going to bail them out, so they need to absolutely make sure that the boundaries are well known, and you need to make sure that you have set those boundaries. Um, if your addicted friend, family member, um, if they are admitting that they have a problem, but they refuse to take action, that is another issue that needs to be addressed. This is, a, uh, this is the difference between admitting and accepting that they have a problem. This person is technically still in denial, like the first person was, but are not willing to change yet. So they say, okay, we know we have a problem, but we're not ready to change. The fear of change, the fear of not having those chemicals or alcohol, uh, come together and they start weighing the pros and cons in their own mind and, and that's why they are afraid of uh, making changes in their life. Um, sobriety to them is like holy water uh, to a devil is like the silver bullet to, the, uh, to a vampire. So sobriety in itself will scare them. They know better than that first person because they admit they have a problem but yet they won't change. Another one would be they admit problem, they want to change but only on their own terms. So now we go from complete denial, a person refuses to admit they have a problem to the next step where a person says, okay I do have a problem but you know I'm not taking action on my problem and then to the third step that we're talking about which is they admit they have a problem, they want to get change, uh, they want to change, but only on their own terms. This is also still denial, but as a sneaky way of denying. The person has agreed to address their problem, says they are willing to change, but on their own terms. No, this is not acceptable. The boundaries still need to be set. Uh, again, proceed with caution on how you address this issue, but. Uh, it is certainly not an acceptable way of uh, uh, approaching sobriety. And then we go into the fear, the person with the fear. Fear holds them back. Uh, the person is so close in making a life-changing decision. Proceed with caution and don't push them over the edge. Be helpful, supportive. Tell them about your fears, how you overcame them. Let your inner story, whatever your story might be, doesn't even have to be related to any addiction. It could be any fear that you have and how you overcame them. Let them know, but say it in a subtle, non-argumentative, non-judgmental way. That is the best way to approach an addict with alcohol and or drug uh, issues. It is the best way to define the person, and which we're going to do again. But you, folks, you have to remember that big change in anyone's life, whether it's addiction, whether it's weight loss, big change all start with very small steps. And you gotta remember that a sober today, I promise you, will make you a better tomorrow. And if you start thinking positive, you will reap the benefits of positive results. A friend, a friend or a loved one is caught up in a cycle of addiction. 
has to be approached in the right way. Now these are certain ways that uh, people can be approached, but more importantly these are one, two, three, four different types of situations that a person might be facing when they're approaching or being approached by uh, the news of, hey, sobriety is on the horizon. We all know that worthless advice fall on deaf ears. And this is bound to be in the case with certain approaches. Some of these approaches, our advice will fall on deaf ears. Try to remember that you're going to run into a person that has complete denial. That used to be me. It used to be one of my biggest things. No matter how many people came up to me and said, you know, you're on uh, the borderline alcoholism, you're drinking a lot, I would deny, deny, deny. I would say things like, well, I had a rough day. I would say things like, well, financial uh, situation caused me to drink. I would come up with any excuse. If a person is in complete denial of their addiction, then there is little you can do to, uh, to help them other than focusing on your own behavior, how you are approaching them. Set boundaries with this particular person. Let them know you will not, and I repeat, you will not bail them out. The boundaries should include uh, things as not bailing them out, not supporting the habit, not giving them money for the habit. The next person that we could run into is they, they are the people that will admit it, but will not take any action. This is a di difference between admitting and accepting that they have a problem. The person is technically still in denial, but they are not willing to change yet. The fear of change, the fear of not having, excuse me, of chemicals, show them the pros and cons on sobriety. They find that there are more uh, pros on being drunk uh, than pros in being sober because they don't know the other side yet. They are still working on the other side. Um, so you have to watch out for the people that are admitting they have a problem uh, and but still not taking the action. Then you have the people that admit they have a problem, they want to change, but they only want to change on their own terms. This is what I choose to call sneaky denial because what are your terms? You can ask them in a subtle way, okay, what are your terms? Do not judge them for their answer. Do not counteract their answer, just hear their answer. No matter what, it's still denial. The person has agreed to address their problems, says they are willing to change, but they say only on my own terms. So listen to their own terms. And then you have the people that have a massive, great amount of fear of sobriety. Fear holds them back um, to a point where they are afraid to proceed further. The person is so close on making a life-changing decision on the borderline of opening the door to sobriety, proceed with caution and don't push them over the edge. Don't push them through the door. Let them make the move on their own. Be helpful, supportive, tell them about your fears and let them know what made you finally go into your sober uh, uh, lifestyle. And if it's not, if you're one of those people that never had an addiction and didn't have that, there has to be something in your life that you can uh, share to make this person realize, listen, it's okay for change because everybody has had to make change somewhere on in their lifetime before. So maybe try to help this person to your best ability uh, with this. And you know, you have to remember that no matter who of all these, the person in complete denial, the person that want, uh, that is admitting they have a problem, but they refuse to take action, the person that is admitting they have a problem, the person that wants to change, but only on their own terms, and the person that has a massive amount of fear. You have to know that only and all changes come in very small steps. That is so important that you realize that you cannot expect a person just to change like this because it cannot happen. It is up to you as a friend, as a loved one, as uh, a neighbor, to just proceed with caution, be subtle about how you speak to them, be understanding, put yourself in their shoes. And you have to remember that no matter what, drug and or alcohol, substance abuse is a disease. It is not something that is easily or at all made by choice. But I will tell you, you can choose to say no and you can choose not to drink, 
not to do drugs anymore. And if today is the day that you choose to do that, wherever you might be watching me, your living room, your kitchen, you might be in jail, you might be at a homeless shelter, wherever you're watching me, today, if you decide today is the day for change, there are two things that are very and equally important that needs to be done today. And the first thing is, is you have to stop denying. Don't be like one of these people that, okay, you're going to stop denying, but you're not going to take action. Okay, you're going to stop denying. You know you want to change, but only on your own terms. Folks, there is only one way of conquering sobriety, of living with sobriety. That is to stop denying and to reach to your higher power, to God, for guidance and direction. Those are the only two ways together to form one way of tackling this. And once you have achieved those two things together as one, now it's time to come up with an action plan. An action plan can consist of AA. It's funny, I was just talking to a gentleman who happened to be working at our house, who told me he just went to his first AA meeting the other day. And of course, I assumed by him saying that, that he went there for himself, but he did not go there for himself. He went there to watch a friend of his. And the reason I bring this up is because my impression of AA has always and still is that in the beginning when you go to AA, which I have done, you're almost like segregated from the people that have gone there many, many times from the newcom newcomers who kind of just sit in a corner. And he, as a spectator at AA, got the same exact impression. And this probably explains why AA only has a 5% first year accomplishment. 95% of the people that go the first year do not come back or have relapses. That is an astronomical figure. 95%. One way that I can tell you right now that turned me off other than another way, but the most important way was the fact that I sat in a corner and watched everybody having a good time sharing their stories and I just sat there. I said to this gentleman who was working at my house today, I said, as a churchgoer like you are and I do, one of the most important things when you see somebody walk through into your church and through those doors is to make them feel welcome. Make them feel welcome like I make you feel welcome every day when I do my videos, my show, into your living room, into your house, to wherever you're watching me. Making a person feel welcome puts that, that uh, shield that they might have around them down. So AA, that gave me that shield to, 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 to keep my shield up, prevented me from going back again because I just felt uncomfortable. But another reason that I prefer not going to AA is that I just personally felt that a person needs more than an hour to an hour and a half a day of recovery education. You cannot go throughout the whole day not dealing with any type of educating yourself on addiction, on recovery, and only do it an hour at night and succeed, I feel. That's why back in June 2013, I rolled up my sleeves and I said, I am coming up with a new method of my own. I came up with my method that works terrifically and my method is through the camera, but my method also tells me to tell you that if you come up with a passion, let that passion include helping others that that will help you daily. Selfishly, I sit here and I tell you, I get more help in doing these videos for myself than I do for you. But in conjunction, we both help each other, you as the audience and me as the host. We help each other because we share our stories. You hear my story, I tell you stories. This is an important factor in, in recovery, to share stories. It is an important factor that I walk the streets in certain towns where I know there's a lot of drug and alcohol and talk to these individuals and hear their stories and give my personal advice. It is important that these things are done. It is important that I, that I do my websites and I put in new articles, new, new uh, snippets by doctors and psychologists for you to educate yourself. My method is so easy and it, it is as easy as this. Find a passion that includes helping others and you will find you will help yourself. And no better way to find this passion 
If it's within you to help others, then to call Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444. Let him turn you into an addiction recovery coach. Utilize the education you'll uh, receive from Dr. Luis Gonzalez. Utilize that in your own life and come up with a passion. You might want to create a blog on addiction recovery where you're sharing stories, where you're accepting stories. You might want to do it through the camera like I do. You might want to do it within your church, come up with a, a, a church group. Because remember, not all Christians are perfect. There are Christians in every church that have drinking issues, that if maybe you're living with it, maybe you're hiding it in a closet. But we all, as humans, can always create a new group in a new setting. Create a group at a church. Create a group at your AA meetings. Create a group on your own in your own home. Do the video cameras. Do the interviews. Do the websites. Do the blogs. But come up with a passion on helping others. And here is the biggest reward. Not only will you stay sober, but here the biggest reward is, is when you help others, you build your self-esteem. Then you'll start seeing that change in small steps. Here are the, some of the small steps. You admit it, you have a problem. One small step. You reach up to God for guidance and direction. Another small step. You came up with a passion. Another small step. You decided you're going to go out and create a blog. Another small step. Do you see how this helps happen? All these small steps. And picture this. In order to cross that river, if you put a lot of little stones into the river and step on each stone, you'll be able to cross that river. You will not have to swim to find out that you uh, drowned. You'll be able to walk across the river with those small rocks. That is what change does. Each and every little step will eventually give you the change you have. By all means, I am not perfect when it comes to sobriety. Yes, I am sober. Yes, I, uh, I am strong. But I am also a person that still has a disease called alcoholism that might every once in a while see a commercial and have that craving. But the difference is I have learned to live without it. I have learned to live uh, to be stronger. And my passion is, is to help you. My passion is, is to educate you. And my passion is also to be here for you at 844 help I told you about the story that I was in an ice rink. Uh, we took our grandson ice skating. And a person kept smiling at me, and um, this was an older gentleman, not, not older, a few years older than me, and we sat down, I was tightening my skates, and uh, he said hello, and we started talking, and he told me he just went to AA uh, for the first time, he's uh, been sober for 10 days. Ironically, we started speaking about my show, uh, fast forward the whole conversation into the next day, and he has now viewed my show, but I am convinced that God brings people together. There, uh, everything happens for a reason. Another situation is, is that I was uh, chatting online about eyeglasses with somebody, and the person says, you know, you have a unique way of spelling your first name, R-A-L-F, Friedrichs. So it's Ralph Friedrichs. He goes, I just saw uh, on uh, uh, a show, a video, on one of the addiction websites that the guy had the same name as you. And what are the chances of that happening, he says. I said, well, that guy was me. That goes to show you how my videos are now reaching anywhere from New York to Jersey, to the West Coast, to the Southern States. My video has reached to Russia, to Poland. My videos have gone to Africa. I get the messages, the, te uh, the emails. I get the uh, comments left on my websites. These are people that see it. And thanks to Google, thanks to Yahoo, thanks to Bing, thanks to all these other Twitter, thanks to um, Instagram, the message is getting out there. And you can have that passion to help others by doing identically what I do or come up with our own passion. But let today be the first day for you to take your life back. And let me assist you in any which way I can. You can text me at 631-599-0218. You can call me at 844-405-HELP. You can email me at ralf at Take Your Life Back Today Show. Uh, but more importantly, you need to start helping yourself. 
Stop being in complete denial. And if you are willing not to deny anymore, you need to start to take action. And if you don't take action, but you admit you have a problem and you want to change, but on your own terms, that is not the way to do it. And do not fear change. Fear of, uh, of change will never change you. Take those small steps and you'll see that change is coming your way. I am here 24-7 to help take your life back. And you have to remember, folks, that a sober today, I guarantee you, will give you a better tomorrow. And if you start thinking positive in your life, you will see nothing but positive results. Stay away from the people that are negative. Stay away from the people that find fault in other people constantly. Because you need to build your self-esteem. And there is no better way to build your self-esteem is by helping others. Help others in church, help others uh, in your neighborhood, help others in any which way you can, and it can be as little as opening the door for someone to as much as possibly volunteer in the food line, but start helping others and you will see changes coming your way, and please try to have a sober today, because I guarantee you it will give you a better tomorrow, and I am here again 24-7 to help you take your life back. Think positive and positive things will happen. Please, folks, have a great day, but more importantly, folks, have a sober day, and may God bless you.